There's a photograph of my parents standing next to a television. I must have taken this photograph. And they're standing by the television, which I think is on, which is our very first television in England. We came here when I was eight and they were in their thirties. And they took the photograph so that they could send it back home to Hungary to say, look, we have a television. So that photograph conjures for me um, their pride in having the television, but also the people we saw on the television at that time. And I mentioned some of these people, Lady Barnett, Bernard Braden, Cathy Kay, all these names which meant something important then, but which mean practically nothing now. And there was also a man called Hanratty, James Hanratty, who was a man, was the last man in England to be executed um, for the murder, possibly the genuine murder, possibly, who knows, um, for the murder of somebody else. So Hanratty, who's at the same time, so it's full of period details, this point. A picture of my parents with their first television. I see them before the television. The proud owners, oh, look, let me just say this, because you won't know otherwise what this means. Um, it says in which the 405 presents its milky versions of success. Television at that time had 405 lines. It had very low definition. It was all a set of grey. Okay, rewind. A picture of my parents with their first television. I see them before the television, the proud owners of a wooden case in which the 405 presents its milky versions of success with the last official faces of a time that was always more dead than alive. When Hanratty cleaned the windows and a crime was solved by men with briefcases and bowlers when gentlemen made jokes in evening dress, they fought their way to this to Lady Barnett, to Bernard Braden and John Freeman, Cathy Kay and Alan Breeze, to all those names of power that solved nothing, but could somehow fill the hours before they slipped away to private lives, which grew more private still, past all the reliable faces by which they set their clocks precisely to the latest hour. Some blurred depth in their eyes I won't come to rest. Perhaps they're trapped in what they bought, in all their trappings, in the slim white frame of the square photograph they sent back home to show the television. Now they are caught and solemn. Slowly they become the stillness by which they are both possessed. They're listening intently for a name which once had power on lips that formed the sound in darkened flats, in beds in which they slept and touched each other. Some act of violence has pitched them here before the screen. The actors know their speeches, are adept at pulling faces, know when to go. They've been elsewhere and are there still, on neutral ground, of which this patch of grey is evidence.